Hey guys, this is Arun Thoravyam and I am a simulation product specialist with Go Engineer. Today we will be going over the random vibration analysis capability in SOLIDWORKS simulation. Random vibration is a type of dynamic analysis that tests for the response of an assembly when subjected to a stationary vibrating load. In this case, we'll be evaluating the response of the circuit board to a random vibe environment. Simulating this vibrating load for the entire duration is an impractical analysis feat. Hence, this analysis uses PSDs or power spectral density curves to determine the peak response of the structure. These PSD curves essentially encompass the frequency and the energy of the vibration load and are usually found in design testing standards such as the mil spec. I've attached an article to this video if you'd like to understand how these curves are derived. Now let's get into the setup. The random vibration study can be accessed from the simulation tab under the linear dynamic study type. Once the analysis tree is generated, we will need to ensure the material properties are assigned. Next, we will need to apply the constraints to the board. These will be the locations where the vibration load will be transferred to the board through a base excitation load. Next, we'll apply the base excitation load, which will be a PSD profile recommended by NASA. Here we'll select the acceleration type and unit as G squared per hertz. These tests are usually run on all three axes, so we'll select the Y axis to start. To input the curve, select the curve button and edit. Now let's take a look at the study properties next. Here we'll set the number of modal frequencies for the analysis and the random vibration options tab specify the loading frequency range. This is typically within the upper bound and lower bound of the PSD curve, which in our case is 15 and 2000 Hertz. Now I'm only interested in the response of the board in the 40 to 700 Hertz range, so I'll key that in. The number of frequency points will control the smoothness of the output response curve, but will also significantly increase analysis time, so 10 points is a good place to start. Finally, damping. Let's set the damping to 2% for every mode, which is a standard assumption for an analysis like this. And let's run the analysis. We'll just use the default mesh settings to run the analysis. Once the analysis is complete, we can utilize the resulting RMS stress plot to visualize the peak stresses in the model during the random vibration event. We can also switch these plots to display the PSD results. With the probe tool, users can determine at what frequencies these peak responses could occur at the various locations of interest. Now there are four links in the video description that go over topics related to random vibration. Please check them out to further your understanding of the subject. Again, this is Arun Tarviyam and thanks for watching.